adjust to your television. It may be Sunday night, but on the record, it's live in New York because we don't want to miss one second of this national showdown. Our jam-packed election special begins with former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. Good evening, Governor. Good evening. How are you? Very well. All right, Governor, I want to talk to you about a lot of things having to do with politics, but Brett Baer, my colleague, just gave me an article of uh, Hot Off the Press Politico um, that is essentially, and I've just finished reading, it's a, it's a beating of you, a trash piece. And uh, let me read to you the full sum of the sources in here. And Mike Allen and Jim Vandehei are the ones who wrote that. And I, here, here are the sources on the, on the article, so hang on to your seat. Top Republicans, advisors to Maine 2012 presidential contenders, other veteran Republican operatives, GOP elites, establishment figures argue not for attribution comments, determined focus establishment effort, top advisors to candidates, top Republicans, top advisors, longtime Republican leaders, and top advisors to rival campaigns. Now, one named source, and they're all saying that you, the, that the GOP is terrified of you and they need to stop paling. Not one named source, all these brave people. And, and these are the brave people who want to lead the nation and run the world, huh? And, but they're not brave enough to put their name in, in an article. You know, I, I guess that I'm a little bit unclued on this because, you know, I take journalism seriously. Mm -hmm. And um, people assign names to things. When you go to court, you raise your hand and you say, I'm so-and-so, I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, not, nothing but the truth. We don't use anonymous sources. There's a reason so that you don't trash people unfairly. And the, at, you would think in this article there'd be one named source. And these are two veteran journalists, but they take you apart limb by limb by limb with nothing but descriptions of uh, anonymous sources. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I don't talk to some of these reporters who are a, a part of this yellow journalism world of, of not using named sources. I think it's, it's very unprofessional. And I, too, with a journalism degree, I learned back in the day that who, who what, when, where, why of journalism. You, you report the facts. You let other people decide what, to, what their opinion is going to be. So having unnamed sources in an article like this is very, very disappointing. You know? and, it, and it doesn't do anybody See, any I, you good. Say it doesn't disappointing. educate anybody. You say disappointing. I say horrifying. Yeah. I say yeah. it's actually much worse than that. Because I'm it's used to it, though, unfortunately, Greta. And, and that's, that's a sad state of affairs. Well, it's that funny that in. you if say I that. Have to get used to it. It's funny that you say that because what they also write, these are not the anonymous sources, but the journalists. They say that, it's a, I'll quote from it, still, she has never faced serious criticism in public in a campaign setting. Me? Yeah, okay, well, that's surprising that they claim that I haven't faced criticism. Holy jeez, where have they been the last couple of years? You know, that, that's, that's been our world. First, you know, even the content, and I haven't read the article yet, but it sounds like the content is coming from the GOP, the establishment, the self-proclaimed elites, as named as sources. You know, it's a fine how do you do when you consider that Todd and I, our family, we've given our life to the cause, to the mission the last couple of years of making sure that people are hearing a common sense conservative Republican message out there. So to get torn apart limb by limb, by limb you know, it's like, God, guys, it's, come but on. It's, but it's, it's worse, though, because it's, it's, I mean, you and I look at it a little differently, and I suppose because I'm obviously not the one being trashed. Um, but the whole idea that, you know, if we're going to have this dialogue, you know, have the courage to stand up and have the courage to take Sarah Palin on or anybody else on in this campaign, whether it's Tim Pawlenty or whether it's Marco Rubio or, or Vice President Biden, whatever. Take them on on the issues. Right. You know, and this, I mean, and, I, and, and when the, it's, it's bad enough that the politicians are doing it among themselves, but when the journalists are so stupid to be had, and these journalists were had, yeah. they thought they had a good story, and they were basically, they shamed themselves. You know, they completely shamed themselves, and I, I'll be curious to see whether any other journalist has the guts to stand up and because Politico has become quite influential in the world. Everyone right, right. What, where Politico goes, uh, the mainstream media picks up where what they have fed them, and then it gets into some, some hard news copy, whatever the content of this story is. I don't know. Maybe in the end, I'll, I can pull a Sharon Angle. I can send them flowers and thank them for what it is that they did in this piece, because I think it will draw attention to what I've been trying to draw attention to, and that is the sad state of affairs in the world of journalism today. It is unfair to Americans to not be able to trust what should be a cornerstone of our democracy a free press, a fair press, when we can't trust what it is they're reporting. And of course you can't trust something if it's only citing unnamed anonymous sources. Um, you can't trust them, then uh, where we are in the state of journalism is, is extremely a scary place to be, a sad place to be. Well, you know, it's, it's so funny. They actually have one name in here, Karl Rove. 
And the odd thing about it is Carl Rove, who's also a Fox News contributor, um, is quoted as saying something about your upcoming reality show on cable TV. Is the show you're doing on cable TV a reality show or not? Does Carl have that right? For the Discovery Channel and the Learning Channel, no. And Carl Rove, he knows that it isn't a reality show. He knows that it's eight episodes documenting what Alaska has to offer, our resources, our activities, the unique livelihoods that are made up there, and the family comes along for the ride. He'll have to, I guess, see it to believe it. But now Carl has planted a few other political seeds out there that are quite negative and, and unnecessary. You know, I, I kind of feel like, why do they feel so threatened? And, and so paranoid. I'm here to help the cause. So are, I hope, all other what? potential candidates in the future. We're here as hopefully team members to help turn this country around and get the economy moving again. Well, whether or not you know whether or not people agree with you or I agree with you, or anybody it, to me, it, I, 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 you know, it is not is not the issue. It's whether or not it, that it's on the issues and it's treated fairly. And the most bizarre thing is that these very people who so bravely wouldn't name themselves and were instead trash themselves and the stupid journalists who were had, um, these are the very people who think they can take on al-Qaeda and national security for the country, but they're afraid to speak up in a political piece. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. And um, no, I don't think that uh, the paper that we just printed this article on, you know, it's not worth uh, even wrapping my king salmon in. And um, I'm very disappointed in what it is that they produce. But on the other hand, I think that it's very reflective of the state of affairs and we plow through that and we do uh, seek to discuss issues we seek to debate in, in a healthy arena what it is that Americans need to start talking about and um, you know I'll just ignore this crap. All right, well, I, I want to throw one other stink bomb out. I look forward to see what the ombudsman of, at organization, we'll see if the ombudsman at NPR thinks about this or any of these other ombudsmen about whether you know this is real journalism and whether this is really how we want to uh, and, you know, foster debate and encourage When did this become real journalism? Where you can cite just, Brett 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 anonymous handed sources. To me. Brett just got off the yeah. air and he handed it to me because it happened between the time Brett Bear got off the air well, and I got it. Well, Politico, Mike Allen, and Jim Vandehei, they're jokes. Yep. This is a joke. To, to have unnamed sources tearing somebody apart limb by limb. It, without a source. Without, without a source. source. Anyway. That's the point. If, May, I, if I, they I, would cite themselves, if they, were, if they would man up, and if they would, <laughs> uh, you know, make these claims against me, then I can debate them. I can talk about it. But when they're just, it, to me, it's, they're making stuff up again. Well, they're terrified of you, which is sort of another interesting whole phenomenon. They're scared, uh, there's a, I was going to say scared something of you, but that, that we're on TV even though it's cable.